In this video, we're going to show you how to get up and running with the Subscribe2 plugin for WordPress. Subscribe2 is a plugin that allows people to really, really easily subscribe to your website such that every time you have a new post or on some other certain events, you can send them a new email automatically. So let's get started. Uh, I've already got the plugin installed and activated as you can see. Uh, and there's a few things we need to do first. So what we need to handle uh, before we go on and do anything really are the various settings that are available to subscribe to. So we're gonna go through them now. Uh, the first are the actual email settings. So we can first restrict the number of recipients per email. Uh, it's currently at one, you can change that of course. Uh, you can also choose what notifications you want admins to get at the moment. And as per the default, admins will only get notifications for uh, new subscriptions. You can choose to say if you want the theme, CSS and HTML in notifications, you can leave this on or off, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you can then choose to send emails for pages, password protected posts and private posts. So they're all no by default and that's pretty normal because it's not often that you're going to be sending an email for a page because a page is not something you'll be putting up on your site too often, it's mostly posts. Uh, and as far as private and password protected posts go, they're probably not the kind of content types that you're going to want people to be reading or have their attention drawn to. So leaving those off is perfectly acceptable. And then just at the bottom of those is include sticky posts at the top of all digest notifications. Uh, it's set to no by default, uh, but of course, if sticky posts are something that you use on your website to draw attention to certain types of content, you may wish to turn that on. Then you can choose where you want to send the email from. You can choose to send it from a user account, from the actual site name, or in fact, from the post author. So it's probably best that you choose something that's consistent. Uh, and if you run a multi-author blog, choosing the actual blog site name might be for the best. Then you can choose how regularly you want to send emails. So you can do it each post, once an hour, twice daily, and so on. It's best to leave it as just for each post. Uh, that's the most straightforward uh, setup that you can have for that. And then for any digest notifications, the date that the post order appears in are uh, descending by default, but of course you can choose to set that to ascending. Uh, and just finally in these particular email settings, we've got some tracking parameters that we can add. Uh, it's got some examples here that you could definitely use if you wanted to. Uh, and what that will do is allow you in something such as Google Analytics, for instance, is uh, track who's coming to visit your website from the email and where, what they're visiting uh, and which particular link out of that email they clicked. So by all means, you can feel free to set that up and when you're done making changes here, just hit save. Next, you can go into the templates uh, settings area if you'd like. These just allow you to configure the notification, subscribe, unsubscribe emails, uh, and so on. And there's a great big list of tags that you can use here to dynamically generate those. Uh, we're not going to cover those at the moment because they're very straightforward, but they are there if that's something you'd like to change. Next, you can go into registered users, and this will just show you where you can choose what categories you do and don't want to be included uh, in terms of what posts are getting sent out to your subscribers. You can also choose to make some changes to the excluded formats there as well as you can see. So if you run a website with various kinds of post formats that you don't want uh, people to be notified about, you can just very easily check those. So maybe you don't want quotes to go out. You can uh, just check that box. And then once you're done, you can go and save. But there are some items here that are particularly interesting under the auto subscribe heading. Uh, the first is that you can make sure people that are registering from your website are automatically subscribed or alternatively you can choose to display the option there. I think allowing them that uh, the option is probably for the best uh, because if you do do it automatically you just need to make sure that uh, they are notified because otherwise you might end up with some very unhappy users. And then two options below that the registration form option is checked by default. You probably want to turn that on to yes so uh, hopefully you get a higher number of people signing up uh, to your email list. Uh, and then just one above that you've got auto subscribe includes any excluded categories. You want to leave that on no, unless of course you have some reason that you actually want people to be uh, receiving email notifications or posts from those excluded categories. I'm not sure what that uh, use case would be, but it is there if you want it. 
Uh, and then you can see auto subscribers, uh, what email format they'll receive. Uh, you can chop and change that as you want. Then you can see uh, registered users have the option to auto subscribe to new categories. So as your site grows, you may create new categories. And if you want them to be automatically subscribed into that, then you just have to leave this on the default setting of yes. Uh, and as you can see, the option will automatically be set to yes. Uh, obviously, people can turn that off if they choose to. Then you've probably got one of the more useful features, uh, I think, and that's allowing people to subscribe when they make a comment on your website, which is probably what most people will be doing uh, when they're engaging with your website. Uh, so you can just simply put after or before the comment submit button uh, to show an option that allows people to subscribe to your newsletter. And then you can obviously just choose to make sure that's checked by default if you'd like. And then for registered users, you can show a one-click subscription on the profile page. So that's it to no. I'm happy to leave that as it is for now. And we've made some changes. So we'll just hit submit. Then we'll just hop over into appearance. And you can set a default subscribe to page. Uh, as you can see here, it's got a list of pages that you currently have in your WordPress website. And you can set that to any of those if you'd like. But I think for the moment, we probably don't want to do that because what we can do is create a page which we'll get to in uh, a very short time from now. So we'll just leave that for the moment. Uh, but here you can see that this is more for the actual appearance in the back end. So it shows a link to your subscriptions, uh, the subscribe to button on the right toolbar, and just various behavioral traits. Perhaps some of the more interesting ones are, are the subscribe to widget and the subscribe to counter widget. So. I think leaving the enable subscribe to widget option on is pretty handy because we'll show you how to use that in a moment. Having a counter that shows how many people are subscribed though, that may be less useful, um, but of course you can turn that on if you would like to show people how many people are indeed subscribed. Finally, we can just jump into the miscellaneous settings uh, and here you can see what you can do is actually block people from subscribing. So. Maybe you don't want people at, uh, say, example.com uh, to subscribe to uh, your email list. You can do that, but uh, just make sure you omit the actual at symbol uh, and then you can just hit submit. So hopefully you're still with me now. Uh, we've covered quite a lot in this video already, uh, but these sort of things are fairly important when you're getting uh, up and running with this plugin. Uh, and the great thing is once you've done it once, you don't really need to do it ever again. So we're going to talk about subscribers now. Uh, what you can do is go to the actual subscribers page in here and you can add and remove subscribers as you see fit. Uh, it's really, really straightforward and easy to do. You just have to put in email addresses, one per line, uh, or have them comma separated. Uh, and this is great because, you know, uh, if you wanted to migrate from MailChimp or Campaign Monitor or something like that, for instance, uh, you can export and then easily just dump the list in here. Uh, but in terms of actually getting the plugin appearing on your website, uh, there are a few steps that you need to do, but fortunately they are super, super simple. Uh, the first way you can do this is by adding a new page to your website, and we'll just call this uh, subscribe to for now, uh, and you'll notice there's an S2 button, so you can just click that, and it'll input the form there for you. So then you can hit publish, and go through to view that page, and I'm currently logged in, so it says that I can actually go and uh, manage this from uh, the back end of the website. So what we need to do is crack open uh, an incognito tab or just something that you're not going to be logged into and head to that URL. And as you can see, you can put in your email address and then subscribe or unsubscribe. Very, very, very straightforward. We'll go back here now. Uh, and the other way that you can make it really super simple for people to subscribe is by jumping back into the dashboard and going to appearance and then to widgets. And then down here a little bit, you'll note the subscribe to widget. So what we'll do is we'll just place that into the primary sidebar and hit our widget. It's down the bottom by default, but you can drag that around anywhere that you'd like. There's a few things you can change here. You can change the uh, div class so it has a different appearance based on your theme. Change the title. You can put content before or after. I think it's pretty handy. So you can say something like subscribe to my awesome newsletter because you'll love it. Uh, then there's some other settings you can do here and post form content page, you can send them to the subscribe to page, which is what we sort of spoke about before. You can choose to disable uh, JavaScript if you're having trouble with that, as well as uh, anti-spam measures also if that's causing you trouble. So we'll just hit save. 
that's been done jump back to our other browser where we've got it in incognito mode and hit refresh and then there you go over on the left hand side you can see the subscribe to your widget is there it's available you can enter your email address subscribe or unsubscribe very straightforward and easy to do just a widget uh, you just have to get through that initial setup though uh, but I assure you it's really not too bad and if you didn't want to do that you can more or less just leave the default settings uh, exactly as they are because they're already set up more or less perfectly uh, and only really specific changes uh, would need to be made if you needed them so we're going to wrap up now hopefully you're still with, uh, with us at the end here and you can go through and set this up on your website it's a pretty great plugin and once you've got it all set up and ready to go you don't really need to do anything else to it uh, and it's a, you know having those emails go out to your visitors or your readers uh, automatically when there's a new post is definitely a great way uh, of increasing reader engagement and getting your page views up so as always if you have any questions about what we've done please feel free to ask in the comments below